continuing the Sufi Kalma or the Sufi principles of commandment or commandment for the seekers. Every individual is born with consciousness but we do not exert it because we have been taught to follow. The children follow their parents, the seekers and the disciples are asked to follow their preceptors, their gurus, their sheikhs. Everyone follows the other and in that we do not understand the essence of our consciousness. This is the reason one does not, one finds it very difficult to attain to awakening. Following others, one never reaches the ultimate flowering. When you look at the flower in the existence, everything is born with that potentiality. Instead of relying on our own potentiality, we rely on others. The others have to guide us. Yes, up to a certain extent. When you are studying any discipline, it is your guide or the teacher guides you up to a certain extent. And if you continue to follow, you are becoming imbecile. You will not be able to grow on your own. You will not be able to use your consciousness, your own intelligence, your own awakening. And the spirituality, the entire effort of the sheikhs, the masters should be to help the children, help the seekers as a parent does, holding their hands, teaching them to walk and when they begin to walk, let go their hand and let them stumble on their own and continue to learn how to walk. In this I had explained various principles of Kalma. Now comes Yadash. It means that the reciter of the Zikr safeguards his heart with negation and affirmation in every breath without leaving the presence of Allah the Almighty and Exalted. This requires the seeker to keep his heart in Allah's Divine Presence continuously. How can it be possible? Every moment circumstances and situation comes and we have to learn how to accept. Remember when you are studying to complete your education, there is a water type, a separation. Each discipline is separate from the other. Mathematics, statistics, different branches of statistics, mathematics, physics, chemistry, biology, all are separate. But as you continue along the path, there is an interdisciplinary approach. And when you have completed your degree, or you are completing your degree, even if it is in management or medicine, you have to use the tools of the statistics and mathematics to complete your degree. In the same way, when a seeker is continuing along the path, these principles or kalmats are not separate from one another. They have to work in harmony with one another. It is very difficult to keep them separate. It's not that today you will eat the flat bread and after that you will eat cheese and then stand up and rotate your stomach in a circular motion so that the cheese and the bread mix together. I have heard a man went to India and he wanted to visit how the people and uh, the eat and all these things. So he went and he saw a shop where a big cauldron was filled with milk and the man was boiling the milk. The person asked, what do you do with this? The shopkeeper answered, this is milk, sir, and we drink it. So he asked how. He told him that this is the milk. We take it in two big bowls and add sugar, different flavors to it. And then we cool it and serve in a clay cup for the people to drink it. He said, okay, give me a cup of milk, but don't add any sugar. So he took the milk and he started drinking it. Afterwards, he asked, give me some sugar. He took the sugar, eat the sugar and he started, closed his eyes and he started to move 
his lower extremities. Watching this, the man, the shopkeeper, thought that there had been something wrong with the milk and the man got sick. So he bring down his shop's shutter halfway and he started watching maybe the man will stop but that did not happen he continued to rotate then he threw down the milk pulled down the shutter as if nothing had happened after a while the person stopped opened his eyes he asked why did you throw the milk the shopkeeper said maybe i thought there was something in the milk and you got sick he said no i was mixing the sugar in the milk this way so we do not use these principles in separation from one another. All these things are to be remembered. That is why a separate explanation is necessary and then they go together. When you are going through the circumstances and situation, we do not accept it. We accept it, whatever comes, comes from the Divine. We are all carrying the Divine spark within us. We are not separate one from one another. We are not aliens nor as a strangers join. We are bound to each other by a causeless force. The meeting of the two people is not accidental. It is ordained. It has to happen this way. If you are continuing in a particular direction to reach a particular place along the way, there are various destinations which you have to pass through. So to our each individual is a, rest, is a resting place along that. Master is a resting place. When you are traveling along, you come to this resting place or the guest house. You stay there for a little while. And when you have taken enough rest, recuperated yourself, rejuvenated and revived your energies, you continue your journey and you reach to the next place because the journey is long you have to halt to stay take rest at many places such is the state of the masters when you leave one guest house you do not carry the memories you simply carry the memory of the final destination where the particular function is taking place which you have to attend to and that is what is most important just give me a minute in the same way, you have to take into account all these principles. You have to take into account the sheikhs, the masters that you meet along the path. You remember when Dattatre, the Hindu saint, he got enlightened. After that, he accepted 24 gurus and he said, my body is the 25th master. Out of our ignorance, we say, this is my master, how can I accept another as my master? Such is the situation of the ignorant ones. Dr. as he was walking through, his, he remembered his mother saying that, learn from everyone, sentient and insentient. He was going and he saw a man he spread his nest, he was a bird catcher, he spread the, the food grains to attract the birds, he spread the nest, birds came and they got, because of the attraction, attachment, they got caught up in that net. While he observed this, a marriage procession passed. He asked the man, whose, what procession was this? The bird catcher said, I did not hear any sound. I did not watch anything. I was busy in catching the birds. He saluted him. And he said, from you I learned the principle of concentration. Continued. He saw a harlot, a prostitute, dressed up, sitting in the corridor home, waiting for her lover to come, but nobody came. 
he asked her what happened. Every night you dress and you're waiting for your lover. He said, maybe he may come tomorrow. He saluted her as his master and continued his journey. He saw a lady with three bangles in her hand and she was using a big wooden hammer type thing to palm the patty so that the rice can be rice grains can be extracted from that husk could be removed as she was continuing in her process the three bangles were striking against one another and making noise she broke the one bangle still two remained and the noise continued slightly less then she broke another bangle now there was only one and there was no noise after that he saluted her and after that each incident he mentioned what he learned he learned that each one of us is lost in multiplicity from multiple you have to come to duality that only you and I exist then afterwards you have to abandon even you and I they are the two sides of the coin if you want to enjoy the benefits of the coin you have to throw it otherwise sometimes the head will be facing you the other times tail will be facing you and you will be caught in this head and tail the duality multiple means there are many you when you go pass through the aisles of the supermarket you see many brands of cell phones many brands and you are unable to decide in point which one you want each one has its own unique features and the salesman is selling and giving you highlighting the features of the particular brand it is difficult you use your own mechanism to choose two and then one so all emphasis should be choosing the one whether we do the zikr whether we do fasting all are meant as techniques to move from multiple to two and two to one when you constantly remember that you are part of synergistic harmony you are not separate from the other the two people may be at loggerhead with one another locked up in the room or in a particular place engaged in arguments and we see only the surface the arguments they are not agreeing with one another but we forget that we are breathing one another the room is filled with the air which is one you exhale and whatever you exhale that remains in the environment and the other being in the same environment inhales you and you inhale him how can we be separate we are drink eating food cooked in the same pot it is cooked in a one pot and it is being served to each one of you in separate dishes separate plates se se separate serving dishes and you consider your food is separate than the other Remembrance of all this are the principles of or these principles of Sufis, principles of the Masters. 
these are not alone the principles who are traveling along the Sufi path are following that institute is for the entire humanity that is aspiring to attain to inner harmony and oneness. It requires the seeker to keep his heart in Allah's divine presence continuously. How can it be possible just by remembering we are all one? All the plants that grow in a garden, they are grown on the same ground, drawing their nourishment from the same ground where the roots are. Each one of them is spreading their wings in the open sky. The same breeze, the same rain water, the same sunlight is nourishing each one of these. This is remembrance that there is nothing else but Allah's Divine Presence continuously surrounding us. This allows to realize and manifest the light of the unique essence of Divine. Each flower is engaged in its own manifestation. What it has deep within, it continues. A rose never follows the marigold and marigold never follows orchid. Each one of them is engaged in bringing out its own beauty and fragrance. And thus the garden is filled with its unique beauty. But we continue out of our ignorance following this one and that one. I am a follower of this sheikh, you are the follower of the other. And that kind of narrowness remains. His spirituality means to go beyond narrowness of all kind. This was the essence of the teaching of Naqshbandi Sheikh Ramchandra Zilla Talaunu, popularly known as Lalaji Zilla Talaunu. As we are coming to the final aspects of this Sufi Kalma, it is essential to, for me to explain in a dimension beyond it is these kalmats are known in Sufi terminology. There are various thoughts that continue to go in the human mind because we are human beings. We have a cognition, we can use our intelligence but we have our egos, the egoistic thoughts, evil thoughts, angelic thoughts, keeping and affirming solely the four forms of thoughts, the hakini or the truthful thoughts, the egoistic thoughts, the evil thought, the angelic thought and beyond this is the thought of hak, the truth. This fourth and this is what is called the fourth dimension or the fourth way by Gurdjieff and Turiya by the Hindus. This will lead the seeker to the highest state of totality by discarding all his imaginings and embracing only the reality which is oneness of Allah, Almighty and exalted as we say in this, along the Sufi path or the Sufi terminology. Remember I had mentioned there is a power within that knows beyond our knowings. We are not strangers. We are bound to each other by a causeless force. The earth that we walk on, everyone walks on the same earth enjoys the same sunlight and the breeze, the rainfall, the clouds, the sunlight, everything. These are our bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All are, this is open to all. And in that, 
we should allow our inner capabilities to blossom, our awareness to blossom. Only then your inner fragrance and the beauty will manifest. If I continue, I continue to follow one path, the cosmic nature of my existence would have not been possible. I would have been speaking only one language, one terminology, and be restricted to only those who are familiar with this. If I know only one language is Spanish and you do not, there will not be any communion between you and I. The communion is beyond all these. It is a dimensionless dimension. Beyond all languages, beyond all techniques and everything, only then it is possible. Such is the spiritual path, the principles of Sufi Kalmat, the spiritual commandments. 